<laughs> Hello! <laughs> Welcome to your adventure, everybody! Um, hi! Uh, I am Anthony Wright Day Hernandez, Community Collections Archivist here at Virginia Tech. Um, you may know me on the interwebs and Twitch specifically as Rogan27. And today I have a wonderful guest, Archivist Kira, and we're going to be talking about cookies. We are. Um, we're going to talk about cookies. I'm yeah. very excited. I have to test because I need to project at this machine. So I, I'm like, I should say something so we can see if the captions are captioned. Yeah, and I... Someday, someday, I will get a captioner that will give you our names when we talk. But, I, you know, hey, I, I'm glad that I got it working so that just both of us are getting captioned. Um, but hi, welcome everybody. It is great to see you. I uh, hope that you're here for a sweet time. Um, as we are going to be talking about cookies and the history there, thereof, I suppose. I mean, it is archives. Um, but hello, Detective Zen. We see the oven for cookies. Um, Elixir, of course. It's good to see you in chat. Um, <laughs> Rogenbot2700. Hi. Ooh, <laughs> We're talking glove. to the bots now. Puddle Glove. Thank you so much for the 15 stream streak. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> Hannah, welcome indeed, cookies. Um, and stream closed captioner, yes, I see you in chat. Hi, Lord Portico. We were discussing, unfortunately, I will say, unfortunately, the site to site cookie transporter is not working today. Yeah. So we should have warned people to supply their own cookies. We are unable to beam them to you while we talk about them today. Sadly, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hi, Detective Zen. I, have I said hi to everybody? Hi, yes, everybody. You have. <laughs> I, I think I caught all of you, um, but it is great to see you all. Um, so, yes, we are here. We are wearing our aprons. We've got We're fashionable. archival documents about cookies. Um, but before we uh, fire up the oven and start... Um, before we dive into the um, sweet, sweet history that is cookies, let's talk about the history of where we're physically sitting. Uh, Virginia Tech acknowledges that we live and work on the Tulo and Monacan people's homeland, and we recognize their continued relationships with their lands and waterways. We further acknowledge that the Morrill Land Grant College Act of 1862 enabled the Commonwealth of Virginia to finance and found Virginia Tech through the forced removal of Native nations from their lands in Western territories. We understand that honoring Native peoples without explicit material commitments falls short of our institutional responsibilities. Through sustained, transparent, and meaningful engagement with the Tudelo and Monacan peoples and other Native nations, we commit to changing the trajectory of Virginia Tech's history by increasing Indigenous student, staff, and faculty recruitment and retention, diversifying course offerings, and meeting the growing needs of all Virginia tribes and supporting their sovereignty. And Virginia Tech acknowledges that its Blacksburg campus sits partly on land that was previously the site of the Smithfield and Solitude Plantations, owned by members of the Preston family. Between the 1770s and the 1860s, the Prestons and local, other local white families that owned parcels of what became Virginia Tech also owned hundreds of enslaved people. We acknowledge that enslaved black people generated wealth that financed the predecessor institution to Virginia Tech, the Preston and Olin Institute. And they also worked on construction of its building. Not until 1953, however, was the first black student permitted to enroll. Through inclusive VT, the institutional and individual commitment to Prosim that I may serve. In the spirit of community, diversity, and excellence, we commit to advancing a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive community. <clears throat> okay, so today we're talking cookies. We're talking cookies. Um, and old cookies, new cookies. I'm gonna let you know Kira uh, move us into the discussion of cookies because I know what cookies are, um, but I don't know why any of these items were specifically picked for today. Oh, I love that you think I have a process. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we are mainly gonna look at cookbooks today about cookies. There are two manuscript collections I pulled. Um, of course, now that we're on stream, I have an itchy nose, so I apologize to everybody. I'm like... Uh, that's standard. <laughs> standard. Um, so we're going to look at maybe two manuscript collections today. We're going to definitely look at one. We'll talk about maybe the other one a little bit later. 
Um, but the one we're going to, I definitely want to <laughs> dig into is the National Biscuit Company, which might sound familiar if you were to say, take some of the first couple of letters from each of those words uh, and put them together. It might sound like Nabisco, oh. which is a contemporary company. <laughs> so my, my brain was like, <laughs> NBC? Well, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to look at a packaging catalog from Nabisco today because I absolutely love this item and it is super fun. So that's more about advertising cookies, but uh, this one's from like the 1930s, so we'll talk about that. We might look at, um, I know we talk about how the fact that we don't do a lot with artifacts. It's not as an archives are intended focus necessarily. Um, but if we have time today, we will look at this little cookbook featuring little recipes for little girls, which is an actual toy. It says toy, but it is actually a functioning set of kitchen tools, but they are scaled down for smaller children's hands. Mm -hmm. So if we have an opportunity, we'll look at some of the pieces of that. There are many in the box. Um, and then mainly we're going to look at books and publications today. I've got some brand name cookbooks you might recognize some things uh, that were maybe created during wartime, which sometimes has different um, requirements or maybe a different approach to cooking when we can talk about things like rationing. Um, I know Anthony found a couple of items. I did find something that are not on the list. <laughs> I was really excited to find a really local cookbook, so we'll talk about that uh, to the very area in which we're sitting. We'll look at some big name things. We might look at a couple of uh, European approaches to oh, things that's European. well English at least ah, biscuits, uh, and, American biscuits cookies. and American cookies uh, okay. um, and then uh, Anthony actually grabbed a couple extra items which I'm super excited about because one of them is a very tiny yes tiny cookbook about cookies it's so a, uh, it, it's sort of an amuse-bouche for the um for the episode right a one bite cookie uh -huh. yeah yeah um, yeah so uh, we also um, Sadly, do not have the technology to send any cookies to you, but, Detective Zen, we do have cookies in the room. Yeah, uh, big surprise. You've probably heard me talk on the show because I realized this time last year was when I came in, we talked about baking. Yes, um, and and the year before was holiday cocktails, cocktails and mocktails. mocktails. Um, suffice to say, Kira is uh, more than slightly your average uh, cookie baker. And uh, this year's total was 516 cookies, which is 43 dozen, if you want me to do that math for you, in 11 varieties. Um, so Anthony and I both have cookies that we brought with us. Yes, yes. Um, somebody was mentioning the Grinch uh, As in a few stealing cookies, but I was like, how right. did you know about Grinch cookies? Like, somebody <laughs> mentioned the Grinch, and indeed, I have Grinch cookies here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> which, which are not green just because they are in a green um, bag. The cookies themselves are green. And are green. they are amazing. They are based on um, the Watergate salad, which is a dessert that incorporates, um, uh, uh, incorporates Jell-O's pistachio pudding mix. Um, and it's just a thing that I decided to make because I like I like Watergate salad, and so one year I decided to try and make cookies that were inspired by that, but then my niece saw them and they were green, and she decided that they were Grinch cookies, and they have been ever since. <laughs> and we are being responsible archivists. We have our cookies contained. We have paper towels. We have hand sanitizer. We are prepared to keep our materials separate from, yes. from cookies today. Uh, we, Don't try this at home. It's actually, yeah. It, <laughs> actually, mean, we'll probably look at cookbooks that are stained because they were used in the kitchen, probably. which is where they're meant to be used. Um, but also, uh, we, we may snack on some cookies while we go. Yeah. Um, the other ones that I brought, I did not make. And I'm told um, that, honestly, uh, where they are traditional, buying them from the store is most often how they are acquired. Um, but. This is the other cookies that I physically brought today. These were made in Germany. Mmm, Lebkuchen. <laughs> Luckily, it's the first negative character ever associated with Watergate. Yep, only one. We are professionals. Do not try this at home. Um, so yes, I brought in um, traditional Lebkuchen uh, made in Germany 
So these are gingerbread cookies. They're soft gingerbread cookies on wafers, which um, apparently I am told uh, that in order to technically be called Leibkuchen, it's like with wine where it has to be made a specific way, or like uh, uh, Tennessee bourbon, there are specific requirements for it to be called bourbon. <clears throat> yes. To be called Leibkuchen, it has to include that wafer. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's just a gingerbread cookie. Yeah. Um, but yes, so this, uh, there are chocolate covered and iced Leibkuchen here. Um, and since we're talking holiday cookies, I thought I would bring these. Yeah. I'm team ice cookie, by the way. I'm really uh, excited too. about that. <laughs> I, the iced ones are my favorites of these. <laughs> Um, what did you bring? So uh, I brought some <laughs> different things. Uh, I brought these uh, lovely, I have to wait till they come into focus, yeah. bright pink cookies, uh, which are strawberry chocolate chip. So this is a cheat that I love. Uh, and this is based, it's a cake mix, so much like Andrew's yeah, Grinch cookies. cookies. These are also mix. based on a cake mix, and the chocolate chips are just a lovely little add-in. Um, I love like strawberry and lemon cake mix to make cookies because they're so bright and cheerful and tasty. Uh, yum, yum, yum. And mm -hmm. bright pink. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a hit with littler kids too when you can hand them a bright pink cookie or like a funfetti one that's full of sprinkles. Oh, like yes. That. I brought some classic chocolate chip, except I rolled some of the ones I made this year in red and green sugar. Yay! I was trying to be festive, you know. Uh, festive. So these are just your classic Toll House. Except I make mine with Speaking a of. slightly different. I don't use butter. I use uh, butter flavored Crisco. Gives you a nice soft cookie. We do have a Toll House cookbook here. Uh, we do from the archives. So and these little little things are peach snickerdoodles. Mm -hmm. So I have a recipe for a strawberry snickerdoodle that I like to make in the summertime. Uh, this year I had some peaches in my freezer that I purchased fresh over the summer, but then had too many of them and didn't know what to do with, so I froze them. And so I decided to make peach snickerdoodles this, this holiday season. Uh, and so these were just uh, made into a dough and then rolled in cinnamon sugar before they're baked. So they have a nice little they cinnamon taste sugar good. crunchy. They're a little bit cakey and, <laughs> and crumbly, but they're still very tasty. Yeah, they, they are tasty. So those are like, then, congratulations on being randomly selected as the special uh, oh. VIP for the stream. So um, congrats. Like, you'll have a lovely little, like, Diamond next to your name <laughs> in chat now for this stream. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, so those are three of the 11 varieties I made. <laughs> yeah. There are bacon fat ginger snaps. There are bacon fat downstairs. ginger snaps in, in my office. There are <laughs> so some rum balls and some cinnamon whiskey balls and mm. some other things that I don't even remember. Oh, butterscotch chip. Uh, oatmeal scotchies and uh, funfetti cake and spice cake with orange and that might be it but I'm probably forgetting something. So the question is do we eat a cookie and then look at documents or look at documents and then eat a cookie about halfway through? I'm not ready for a cookie right now personally but I will not I will never tell anyone not <laughs> to have a cookie if you want one now because I could find something that we could start looking at. Well. We should Which I looking. should do anyway. Yeah, we, we should start looking at documents. We do have the amuse bouche that we talked about, so maybe yeah, we should Yeah, we should do that start first. with our tiny little <clears throat> um, tiny little uh, little cookie book, literally. So there's my, my finger for scale, right? We just go Oh, we're zooming in. <laughs> it's it is a little cookie. So it is the little cookie book. Uh, the subtitle of this is Thirty One Favorite Recipes of a Mini Bibliophile. So you can see there, um, that's like a standard pencil, because as um, uh, anyone Indeed, from, nice. yeah, if, Any if, anybody roll fans. who's a Crit Roll fan <laughs> will recognize this as uh, one of the pencils, the, the spice pencil. Um, so you can see how big this little cookie book is yeah. uh, based on that. Hi, Stephen Joyce. <laughs> Welcome in. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have to lean all the way over here, because I have short arms for a tiny book. Um, so we have some little decorations, some powdered sugar some elves, details. some some corn. Uh, we'll see how that all fits together. A snifter of brandy? Well, you made corn cookies. I did make lime cornmeal cookies. They were very good. Uh, I'm going to have to... 31. 31. Favorite recipes. Okay, so this is... 
our title page. Of a mini, 31 favorite recipes of a mini bibliophile. Mm -hmm. 1960. 1960. Oh gosh. So All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna find something and then I'm gonna put my hands back there. To put together their favorite recipes. I guess. <laughs> I um, love it. So we can see. Here we go. Yes, Little Thunder Press. Ingredients. Oh, preface. Table of equivalents. Table of equivalents. Yeah, so everybody keeps telling me that baking is some sort of science. They have never met me. I am chaos <laughs> incarnate when it comes to baking. I love that <laughs> instead of table of contents, it's called it's ingredients. ingredients. Yeah. Um, general directions. Anastrophs. Brandy snaps. Very classic. Brazil nut cookies. Yep. Butterscotch brownies, butterscotch cookies, AKA cereal, blondies. cereal nut straws. I, I have never thought of using Brazil nuts in anything. I just, I, I've always had Brazil nuts just as like raw nuts at, at holiday time. Chinese almond cakes, what? chocolate squares, stars, treats, coconut macaroons. Cornflake macaroons. Ooh, interesting. Dick Thank you, Zen. I agree. Chaos is a type of science. It yeah. is my science. Yes. Because I am not good at other signs. There's a whole chaos theory. Um, dream bars, fudge squares, gingerbread. Here we go. Gingerbread cookies. Yes. Ginger, ginger snaps, snaps. And Lady and Kukin. And Kukin. So we've got like the ginger trifecta. Uh, hazelnut crescents. Mexican wedding cakes. Yep. Nut balls. Oatmeal crispies. So and one surprise. thing I will warn you all today. We're going to see the word cake appear a lot. And it is often, early, at least in some early cookbooks and in recipes that carry through, interchangeable with cookies because they are in fact in effect, small cakes, and that is where the tradition came yeah. from. So you may see a lot of things we bump into today labeled so, cakes, but it probably means cookies in our context. Cookies are basically like muffin tops. Yes. They're, they're, it, like if you tried to make a muffin top by taking the muffin batter and not having the bottom of it, you'd end up with a cookie. Um, <laughs> petticoat tails, sponge drops, springerly? Yeah, I think Spritz, yeah. sugar cookies, walnut squares. Let's see if there's anything else. Nope, that's the last that's one. That's it. Yeah. Cool. So we have a little preface about miniature books. Um, because the person who wrote this was a mini bibliophile. Uh huh. So that was what they were going to talk about. But <laughs> I'm going to get us to the. We've done a whole episode, episode on mini books. Yeah. This one was not in that episode. Uh, but if you check through the library's YouTube, um, it should be in the year two episodes of Archival Adventures. Oh, Paul Glum, you're going to ask me about where they fit in the cube theory? <gasps> yes! Oh, gosh, yes. I don't, cookies don't <laughs> fit in the cube theory because they're not a cube food. <laughs> so we have our lovely little table of equivalents. So as I said, I am a chaotic baker, but as a rule, baking is a science and it is specific and detailed and for a reason. Um, if you didn't know it, standardized measurements did not actually become a thing, um, at least in the United States, until eight, about the 1890s when the Fannie Farmer Cooking School um, actually established what we would consider standardized measurements for teaspoons, tablespoons, and cups. <clears throat> so this table of equivalent, even though this book's from 1960, is kind of interesting to see because it's like, well, this is what we mean by this, or this is what I mean by this. Um, so if you're thinking or working in a different um, measurement system, this may help you kind of convert things back and forth um, or think about them in a different way if you're not familiar with those measurements. Um, interesting to see that like uh, baking chocolate has both an ounce, like this is the weight of it, and also you can replace it with cocoa and shortening um, as opposed to working with a lovely little um, baking bar or something along those lines. Um, so like I was saying, precise, right? So the first thing we see under general directions, always use level measurements and standard measuring cups and spoons. I think I should leave at this point. I already feel seen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have some little elves who are preparing our powdered sugar to be um, sifted. Um, yeah, called out is better, Puddle Glum, but not seen. I'm being called out. We know it. Um, so we have some common abbreviations when it comes to baking. It's actually really useful information right. that if you're more new cookbooks should include. To baking, then this is totally going to be useful information. <laughs> you know, you should, are you going to sift your flour before you measure? Um, you know, how do you do that if you've never done it before? The, this is actually really helpful. Does it tell you... Uh, butter. Does it specify oh, well, it salted does, or unsalted? 
Well, let's see. So it does talk about how to measure shortening. Is. So on this, we have to measure shortening, pack firmly but into the spoon or cup. Um, oh, that's a neat idea for measuring a partial cup. Do it by tablespoons or fill the cup with cold water minus the amount of shortening specified and then add the shortening in small pieces until the water reaches the full mark. We're using science. Science? Science. Science! <laughs> Um, okay, so we have granulated sugar. I don't know. Was elves stealing food? They might have been. Probably. Let's see. Talk a little bit about brown sugar versus white sugar and how you should treat them Use differently. Use the size pans specified in the recipes. Well, I think that's probably mainly for bar cookies. I agree. It's like because it's yes. going to make a big difference if you're making a bar cookie and you use a very different size pan. Yeah, if you're supposed to be using an 8x8 eight eight and, and you use... Um, a 9 by 11, uh, your bar cookies are going to be really thin because the batter is going to spread out a lot further. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put, so number nine says always remove cookies from a pan, from pans at once. I'm going to put a caveat on that and let your recipe tells you not to because <laughs> sometimes you're going to have your cookies continue to bake on that pan before you remove them to a wire rack. <laughs> sometimes they need just like a minute to set. I had a recipe. Take them out of the oven, and they'll still be too soft to actually remove. And and so you have to wait a second before you can get them off. And the cornmeal cookies that I made this year specifically said leave on the pan until cool. Like they didn't want you to take them off of that pan until they were cool. According to what possibly is America's Test mm -hmm. Kitchen, there's no standard amount of salt in salted butter. So Correct. using unsalted butter gives you more control over the salt content. Now, a lot of contemporary recipes, and we'll see when we get in here, specify unsalted butter when they mean unsalted butter. Um, and that's very often what you see in baking because you're also usually adding salt to your recipes. But sometimes it's different. Um, let's see. Let's well, because a lot, whenever recipes don't say, I'm always like, okay, but salt al or butter used to always be salted. There was no right. such thing as unsalted. So is this recipe one that assumes that butter is automatically salted, or is this recipe one Personally, when I'm baking, I assume butter. <laughs> when I see butter, I assume unsalted. But that's because I that's just the way I tended to bake. But um what if your dozen cookies are going to be pan sized? I mean, that's fine too. Then I hope you have a lot of pans um, then, because that's going to be a lot of. <laughs> if your dozen cookies are going to be pan sized, you should probably be prepared with a piping bag and some frosting so that you can decorate your cookie cake. Yes. <laughs> Would you rather have a dozen cookie sized pans or a dozen pan sized cookies? Why not both? Yeah, well, if you have both, then you make both. <laughs> so I, I'm just going to skip around a little bit. I picked brandy snaps because they're actually a very classic cookie. Um, they're a very delicate one. I know they've been featured I several times. I it would be on... similar to ginger snaps, right? Well, they are, yeah. They're very thin and fancy. Um, I think they've been featured a couple times on like Great British Bake Off and stuff because they're. I think they're originally. Uh, and you can see we have... Um, so this is in 1960 when There's no they, brandy in it. There is... Uh, no brandy. I suppose in it. they're meant to be had with brandy. Yes, although I think there are versions that include brandy as well. But I would, I, I would read this recipe without the title and think ginger snap. Yeah. Um, and this one's interesting. It's got corn syrup instead of sugar. Um, Nineteen sixty, so that's not. So they were like, corn syrup was great. Drink it by the bottle full and put it in everything. Um, this is interesting because this cookie starts over a double boiler. Not often something you see where your process starts over a double boiler because you have to melt your butter and dissolve your sugar and then huh. and then put your flour and mix in. This is I, I think this is a tricky one to make, which is why they feature it on a lot of baking shows uh. um, because it's a lot of technique that's involved in because um, then you chill your dough, you roll it out. Yeah, this is much more complicated than most. You have cookie cutters um, or at least rounds, and then. Uh, that's a wide baking time, seven to 12 minutes. That's a big window. Wow. Um, uh, the 400 degrees, um, interestingly, it was so good about introducing basic concepts at the beginning. Um, uh, that that uh, temperature is in Fahrenheit. Yes. 
Um, but nowhere did it specify that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It is probably assuming a U.S. audience. <laughs> um, and you can see these talk about do not overbake brandy snaps because they actually, as they cool, harden even more. And that's the whole point of a snap is they, they, they snap and they make a noise. And that's like the thing that that's why it's called a snap. Also, it uses traditional snap spices. It's got cinnamon and nutmeg in it. Um, so brandy snaps are a fun one. Let's Cause, see. Because if, um, if you try to bake it at 400 degrees Kelvin, you're not going to get very far. Oh, boy. Um, that could be disastrous. <laughs> Um, let's see. I'm going to jump around so we can make sure to get to other things. Ooh. What were the cornflake macaroons? Oh, the cornflake ones. The let's next see. recipe the after that cereal one, ones? Oh, cornflake. Ah. Because it's coconut macaroons and then there was cornflake macaroons. All right, but it might not have been in that order. Hold oh. on. We're going to go back to our list of ingredients. Coconut... <laughs> Oh, cornflake macaroons, 34. Okay, almost there. It's a tiny book, and I don't want to, like, tear a page out, so I'm yeah. sorry, y'all, I keep no, taking I it really out. Of... That one, okay, you're going to find this hilarious, Rogan, slash Anthony. I forgot which stream I'm on. I'm on both of them. It, it's both. Okay, so I'm going to move this up. Note the page numbers right, right above, above my fingernails. 32, 33, blank. Mm -hmm. That's, That's where, where it's supposed to be. 35, 36? 36, 37? We have no recipe in this cookbook. The corn flake macaroons are missing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, stream's over. This is... <laughs> I picked out the one recipe, or there's actually two recipes missing because we're missing four pages. Um, just imagining someone following that recipe and the individual corn flakes are almost larger than the book. Yes. And then, no, the same thing happens again. We have a bunch of... Uh, blank sections in here. Amazing. I wonder if they're in there and they're just out of order. It could be that they are um, out of order because if it was a. Uh, Kelvin is about 261 Fahrenheit or 127 C. So they, yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't cook properly. It doesn't look like they're in here. It literally just looks. Like, I think we have a misprint copy that's just missing. I missing mean, some parts. Most we have Grandma's Lab cook in there. But we'll look at those. Um, yeah. Most tiny books like this are. Um, bespoke. They're not uh, mass produced, so finding errors is not especially surprising. Um, <laughs> I can't believe the one recipe you asked about. Well, we're actually missing several, but yeah. now I'm going to have to go uh, see if other editions are like this, if it was like an accidental misprint, or if there's something else going on. Well, and uh, we should probably note it in the catalog records that we should also it's missing noted in the catalog record. recipes. Uh, the joys of uh, being an archivist <laughs> and a rare book librarian. Things like that happen. Um, one of the signature um, signatures of Leibkuchen is that they are made with honey. Yes. As so. opposed to a ginger snap or a ginger, well, a gingerbread cookie, which is only molasses, not honey. <laughs> hey, the author's about the size of your thumb. Give him a break. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is Lilliputian Press. Or it is Lilliput Lilliput Press. Press. Yes. Uh, so we have a cup of molasses, a cup of honey, two cups of lard, a cup and a half of sugar, which in this case is white sugar, one egg, one tablespoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of, that would be baking soda. They just leave a word off because they assume you know what they mean. Uh huh. Yep. Four teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of cloves. I'm going to assume ground. Two tablespoons of nutmeg. I'm going to also assume ground because whole nutmeg. <laughs> And chunks or cloves would be well, you would, unpleasant. It would be hard to get two teaspoons yes. of not ground nutmeg. Uh, and then we've got some other elements here. We've got one cup of ground almonds. Uh, one cup. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be lemon peel or oh, candied okay. lemon peel and candied orange peel. Uh, and then we just need enough flour to make a dough. So that's. I, we got, I just got done saying how this is a precise thing, baking cookies, but I am total chaos. And then they're like, eh, just put flour in there until it's good. Also, a pound of currants. Yeah. <laughs> Which, currants tend to not be super easy to find in the U.S. They, they do specify <laughs> baking yes. powder as opposed to baby powder or gun powder. That is right. Yes. That would be uh, very awkward. <laughs> um. So this is interesting, too, because they have you mix your molasses on honey and shortening ever so slightly to sort of Wait, melt them together. But I, 
the recipe instructions say to mix molasses, honey, and shortening, but shortening is not in the list of ingredients because it tells you to lard. have lard. You could probably use shortening you instead could, of lard. But the ingredients I'm list says lard, yeah. and then the instructions I'm say shortening. I'm starting to wonder about the construction of this book, but, so, <laughs> but we're not here to it's judge. Just, like, I, I loved at the beginning. It had some very basic things, but then things like that where an editor needed to reconcile that because or like if, find the missing page <laughs> if you're intending for <laughs> potentially new bakers true. Uh, they won't necessarily know that shortening can be substituted for lard that is true <laughs> um so yeah we mix together some of our our ingredients let's see get to the next page there are a lot of directions for late cooking they are not a simple cookie uh we're going to add not. our almond and our fruit peels um, and then just add enough flour. Just add enough flour. Just enough. <laughs> I'm skimming to see if it's going to tell you how to make the wafer. Because I so far don't see the wafer mentioned. I don't know. No, they recipe? don't. Well, they don't have one here. Detective because... Zen, it's baking. Consistency matters. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> The consistency of your dough will determine what you end up with. Now, I will say this is layered because they put currants in half of the dough and then bake it, cut it to, to a third inch thick and bake in a moderate oven. Um, cool and moderate and hot oven were all terms that are carryovers from the early days of American baking when they didn't have standard, like you would, you didn't have a good way to know the standard temperature of your oven, so you might say, the other one I like is a hot oven was also referred to as a quick oven. Uh-huh. Um, and the, do you know how <clears throat> you used to test in colonial America, whether, how you used to test about the heat of your oven? No. You would stick your arm in it, and the longer you could keep it in there, the cooler your oven was. So the goal was like, I think it was like something like if you can't hold your arm in the oven for more than like five seconds, you have a quick oven or a hot oven that you want around 400 degrees at that I point. I feel like there had to have been a better way. Like, like you check to see if you can make pancakes or griddle cakes on a griddle by sprinkling some droplets of water on it. And if they dance, it's ready. Do you, think, have have been a better do you way. think it's connected at all to the fact that one of the most <laughs> common reasons that women died in the 18th century was catching fire in the kitchen? Probably. <laughs> Sometimes we don't think things through. Um, so this is a two-part. They cut the dough in half. They do have you doing different things with it, but it does not appear to have a wafer. Right. And, I do like that they keep indefinitely, though. At the end, it says these are hard cookies, and mm -hmm. the ones that I'm familiar with are soft. So and this is wafer. closer to like a gingerbread, but yeah. it happens to have, yeah. Like it, yeah. The consistency of your dough determines what you end up with. True both with baking and money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is true. Um, but, yeah, because these are, these are what I was expecting to get with a, a, a Labe Kuchen recipe. Um, I can zoom out. We, we can move to a different book, yeah. too. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to a different one, because I want to keep, be aware of time. But anyway, we yeah. should put a That's what I thought Labe Kuchen <laughs> would get me. Look at this. Um, These are like the book is, the book is smaller, smaller than, than the lid cookie. <laughs> so, but as we know, cookies move around, like recipes move around from place to place, and different cultures or groups may alter them, change them around a little bit, so mm -hmm. you get different things. Um, let's well, see. and a, a chocolate chip cookie from Toll House is not going to be the same as a chocolate chip cookie from uh, that, like. If you buy the cookie dough, it's going to be consistent. But if you make the cookie dough yourself, your chocolate chip cookie is probably not going to taste the same as your neighbor's chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. Because every family does them different. Yeah. But also, we have the Toll House Treasury. Yeah. Do you want to zoom? Oh, there we go. So this is a lovely little uh, hardbound uh, 3D, as we'll see, three ring binder recipe. Um, so I said we talk a little bit about some uh, corporate cookbooks because, of course, companies are always interested in advertising their product in a good and how you acquire it and use it. I do not know who Marvis T. Henson is. I don't know either. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is uh, the Toll House. They so used to own this book. They've also got lots of basics before you bake. So if you're new to baking, 
Um, hey, make sure you read your whole recipe. Even if you're a chaos baker like me, I highly recommend that you read yes. your whole recipe before you do anything, especially if you're going to go rogue. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Detective Zen, I was laughing recently because I saw people joking about buying the edible cookie dough and then just buying pre-made cookie dough. And I was like, but I can make it so much cheaper at home and it hasn't gotten me yet. <laughs> Tasting History just did a video a week or so ago on Toll House Chocolate Chip Cookies. Yeah. That's great. I love number two, remove buttercream cheese and eggs from the refrigerator. I wish yes. it would tell me how far before I start that I should do that. It really depends on your kitchen because you want like those kinds of ingredients to be room temperature. Yeah. So that, unless it tells you to melt them specifically, like butter, for example, um, because it helps them blend better and things like that. So unless it tells you to keep them cold or something or tells you to melt something and that, room temperature in whatever your kitchen is is ideal uh, inclusion of eggs there uh sort of regionalizes this to america yeah and if i so i usually will if i'm being good and thinking ahead will take my eggs out about 15 to 20 minutes before i start baking or when i'm setting something else up because um, not all other parts of the world do they keep their eggs in the fridge. Correct. <laughs> Again, we're kind of, much of what we're looking at today was published in America and assumes a U.S. audience. I have one or two, at least one U.K. item, which may have some differences. So this book also talks about some tips and techniques. So how do you separate eggs if you're not sure how to do that? Beating egg whites, making whipping cream, blanching almonds if you don't want those almond skins on your almonds. If you bought almonds with the skins on it, you don't want them there. Um, toasting nuts because it actually adds a lot to the flavor. The same with toasting spices. Throwing your spices, if you're using them in something, whether cooking or baking, um, on a little bit of heat, low heat first, and then using them can be really nice. Um, uh, I will defer to your pie expertise, but they do talk about the, baking blind. The um, <clears throat> par baking. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say uh, historical terms, but also... Uh, accurate yes. terms as far as the tradecraft, but um, uh, you can you can talk about the same thing by um, by calling it pie baking instead. But yes. yeah, uh, basically any pie where the pie filling is made on the stovetop and you're not going to end up baking it in the oven or where there's a concern about having a soggy bottom. Um, don't want those. You end up needing to par-bake the pie crust so that the crust will be fully done and then you can fill it. So a, a lot of like pudding pies and things like that also are going to end up with a par-baked crust first. We've got techniques on kneading. We've got some tips on measuring your dry ingredients, which we saw in the other book. Some tips about your liquid ingredients because those are not the same. What? <laughs> Um, <laughs> measuring, I like this part, measuring small, small quantities. quantities of ingredients. Um, I guess they mean using measuring spoons as opposed to uh -huh. cup measures. For dry ingredients, fill the spoon and level off with a metal spatula. Mm -hmm. Precise measurements are essential for successful yeah, baking. Yeah. You can budget a little <laughs> bit, but most of the time, I mean, baking is, in essence, chemistry. Like, you combine the ingredients, add heat to energize it, and the items undergo a chemical transformation to become the finished product. Uh, so it is important, the amounts of things, it will change what you come up with. Yeah, we've got some a whole bunch of useful terms if you're encountering them for the first time. Um, oh boy, we even talk about gelatin. I can't get away from it. To chill gelatin mystery <laughs> until it thickens to the consistency of unbeaten egg whites. Yeah, I mean, gelatin is... So this book is not just about um, cookies. It's about Toll House, using Toll House yeah. products in general. We're going to focus on the cookie section today, because, mm -hmm. so, but that's why it talks about some of these other techniques about using some things that you might not usually use in cookies. So we've got more stuff about measuring, if you're not sure how to measure different kinds of things or what some equivalents are. Um, we could talk about ingredients themselves um, and what they are and how they differ. This is really interesting uh, to me, the sugar and sweetener one and the milk one in particular, because those can mean a lot of different things for different people. And like, it's nice to have a clear, like, this is what this means. Um, 
because sometimes those things are interchangeable, but, like, there's a big difference between, like, it, like well, low-fat milk and, and whole milk are one thing, but, like, there's a difference between sweet and condensed milk and, right. like, low-fat milk. And, like, if you're, <clears throat> if you're an inexperienced baker and you don't know, seeing that confectioner's sugar is just granulated sugar that's been ground and sifted and can also be called powdered sugar, if you're making stuff and the shops are closed because it's a holiday, and all you have is granulated sugar, it's like, oh, well, if I grind this up a little bit finer and sift it, then I should have what I need. And you might not have known that. Or um, brown sugar, if you've got molasses and you've got sugar, you've got brown sugar. And if you have milk and vinegar or milk and a little bit of citrus juice, you actually have a buttermilk substitute. Yeah. Because I don't usually buy buttermilk, but I have a couple of recipes that sometimes use it. So there are some ways to do quick substitutions uh, for things that you may not normally have in your house or want to have around. Like, what am I going to do with a pint of buttermilk when I need, like, two tablespoons of it? Pancakes. Well, that's true. <laughs> I said, what am I going to do? <laughs> uh, look, even it even has a, a section called Substitution Magic. If you don't have baking powder or if you don't have brown sugar or if you don't have buttermilk, like I said, lemon or lime or vinegar, um, if you don't have corn syrup, that's interesting to me. They have a recipe, uh, substitution for corn syrup. If you don't have cornstarch, if you don't have cream, um, if you don't have honey, if you don't have cake flour, that's a good one because not everyone has cake flour around unless you specifically are uh, heavy into cake baking. Um, if you don't have, you know, fresh grated peel, things like that. Um, it's going to get into care and handling of chocolate which of course is a very common ingredient in a lot of Toll House things and can be very specific. Um, but anyway, let's look at some cookies in here. Yes. Oh, chocolate raspberry Linzer cookies. Nom, 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 nom. So again, we have a little bit of a complex cookie. Some of the ones we've looked at so far have had a lot of steps to them and a lot yeah. of technique. Eventually I'll find us some simpler this ones. This is a layered cookie. This is a layered cookie, which means a, a dough that you then have to split, roll and cut and a filling a lot of work i love a good layered cookie i just don't like to make them because it's a lot of work it's a lot of work <laughs> um but this has a nice raspberry and chocolate filling like a classic Linzer tort um we've got some butterscotch date surprises i really like dates in a cookie um they're a fun fruit they're under underrated some ah <laughs> <laughs> Um, Anthony's been replaced by the Cookie Monster. <laughs> I, I think Cookie Monster uh, got excited. Has a question? It looks like he has a question. He had a hand up. I thought, like, maybe... Uh, Zen, you're right. It's a lot of work to rip a cookie apart just to eat the filling. Linzer cookies don't twist apart like an Oreo once that chocolate sets. You're, you're done for. Um, let's see. We have uh, so butterscotch date surprise. It's got like a filling that's rolled in a dough and then you cut it into little pieces. Um, and uh, we've got anise cookies. Ugh, I'm not a licorice fan, so. Um, it's interesting that it it's showing up and, and it's like I never think of it as a dessert. It's just licorice and the fact that it's in so many things as like the desserty things is just weird to me, but uh, we have chocolate mint cookies and chocolate mint meltaways. Different cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, again, these are all a lot of like moving parts. I'm what, where's where's like the simple drop cookies? That's like my go-to. Ooh, chocolate dipped sandwich macarons. Okay, now we're macaroons. Now we're talking. Chocolate dipped macaroons, which <laughs> also have chocolate in or have jelly in the middle or jam. You know. <laughs> um, and we've got mocha walnut that sounds pretty good too there's a lot of things in here that uh, I mean I love a good cookie oh here we go chocolate dipped brandy snaps so these snaps are shaped the other thing you can do with them is when they take them out of the oven before they set you mm -hmm. can shape them around a dowel or a rolling pins so you can make them like taco shaped and then fill them with cream it's often done Ooh. or these are rolled in probably around like a wooden spoon handle 
Ice cream. chocolate dip. You could make them into ice cream cones. You could make them into ice cream cones. It's hard. You have to be quick because they start to cool really fast, and then they can snap while you're rolling them. It's another reason, like, there's a lot of technique involved in a brandy snap. Um, mocha shortbread cookies. Mmm. Including instant coffee. <laughs> um, let's see. Chocolate peanut butter chewies. And your classic peanut butter. Oh, so their peanut butter cookies are made with peanut butter morsels, which I'm not even sure they make anymore. Well, I mean, it's because it's the Toll House. Yeah, book, as opposed so to running, using peanut yeah. butter. But, but it is the classic peanut butter cookie mm -hmm. that you take a fork. A fork and, and make the pattern with the fork tines. I like this one because it has a lot of pictures for us, so we can kind of imagine what these cookies would look like. Double chocolate. Mm. Chocolate orange granola. Okay. Okay. I mean, chocolate orange is a very um, common holiday So this has thing. actual... I'll move it over because uh, actual granola cereal in it. We can go back to our Kellogg episode where we talk about <laughs> breakfast cereals. Um, so we've got orange rind and granola cereal and chocolate chips and coconut and nuts. It's like a kitchen sink cookie. Monster cookie. Yeah. It, 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 to my knowledge, kitchen sink cookies are called monster cookies. Snowballs. Snowballs. So snowball. Oh, these are made with uh, peanut butter. So this is peanut butter morsels and chocolate morsels and confectioner sugar and salted peanuts so that's your filling and then there's a cookie component to it and then you roll the whole thing in powdered sugar slash confectioner sugar whichever one you want whichever one you want to call it cookie cookie <laughs> uh oh <laughs> can you put the hand under yeah there you go <laughs> 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 you do like here's for your chocolate and date one. Apparently they were really into getting people to eat dates, dates. in cookies. <clears throat> dates are um, one of those things that historically are um, sort of posh, like uh, high class. Um, yeah. Like escargot, caviar, dates, figs, uh, figs. Yeah. I like, Fancy. okay, so I just, Fancy I looked up at the page and all I saw was a star that said, note, mixture will look curdled. I really appreciate a warning like that yes. because I made these lime cornmeal cookies and the wet part of the batter was going together and I'm staring at it going, did this curdle or is this supposed to look like this? So like, as, even as someone who's an experienced baker, I was like, you know, a warning that this was going to look like it curdled would have been really nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, do I throw this away and start again? Like, I... <laughs> uh, we have... Uh... <laughs> yeah, Paul, I'm only the right person. They want to push people into dates. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else do we have? The original, the original Toll House. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees. Fahrenheit. Original toll house. In a small bowl, combine flour, baking soda, and salt. Set aside in a large bowl. Combine the butter, sugar, brown sugar, and vanilla extract, and beat them until they are creamy. Beat in eggs, and then gradually add Usually the flour Usually that's mixture. beat in eggs one at a time, so I'm a little surprised because that's how I was... Stir in how I was doing Nestle right Toll House semi-sweet chocolate morsels and nuts. Drop by rounded teaspoonfuls onto un. They're making big ones. Thank you. Drop by rounded tablespoonfuls onto ungreased cookie sheets. Bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for nine to 11 minutes. It makes a total of five dozen cookies if you start with the uh, measures that are specified. You can also make these in a pan form and cut them into squares. Highly recommend. Also, Toll House cookie batter is extremely freezable. I have, you oh. can freeze it before you bake and keep them in your freezer on demand if you just want to like reach out and make some cookies. Um, and and uh, they freeze up to eight weeks as they say, or you can put them in the fridge for up to a week. If so. you are um, working with making lots of cookies, uh, 
I highly recommend having a um, an ice cream scoop uh, because it makes doing consistent measures. I have really, cookie, really I have cookie scoops in three different sizes. Yeah. I'm that nerd. I have two sets of stackable cooling racks and three different size uh, cookie scoops. But uh, so I didn't ever the, do. The part about freezing or refrigerating Neo gets is that the dangerous information. It is dangerous information because when I realized I could just make a whole batch and freeze them. Well, and uh, a, a good tip is freeze your batter even if you're not planning to store it because it's easier to scoop when it's frozen. Um, and it will bake just the same. Uh, I know this because I worked for a while at Great American Cookie Company and all of the cookie batter was frozen. <laughs> and it, it was so much easier to scoop when it was frozen. Uh, Puddle Gum, I, my go-to for family and friends is a butterscotch chip cookie. So it is this recipe with butterscotch. But I also made butterscotch chip oatmeal cookies this year, which were really good. See, I want this, but I want it with toffee chips. Yes. <laughs> that, that also works. Delicious on-demand cookie dough may result in too many cookies consumed. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even have to bake it because then you just have cookies in your freezer. That Too you many eat. cookies? I was going to say, Cookie Monster's going to disagree with that. <laughs> uh, cookie Monster likes to encourage healthy eating too. Now. Oh, we have oatmeal extravaganzas. Do they have monster cookies in here, I wonder? I don't know. We haven't seen them yet. Irish coffee brownies are getting fancy. Milk chocolate Florentines. Again, the Florentine is like the snap. It's a cookie that involves a lot of technique yeah. to make it just right. Because um, you need to get the little holes in it. Yes, and they're very like lacy and fragile, so you can end up making a mess with those. Oh, oh this is scotchies. what I made. That's what I made. Oatmeal scotchies. Also, they have butterscotch lemon cookies. That sounds like it could be good. Which are basically your classic... Nope, they've got milk and lemon juice and lemon rind. Huh, interesting. We're one hour in. Okay, let's see. We've got some chocolate raspberry coconut squares, streusel bars. Let's see. We get into some brownies. Now, is a brownie a cookie? Mmm. It's an excellent question. It's because, like, Bars. if it's not, but then a bar cookie is a cookie. Mm. Isn't a brownie just a bar cookie? Kind of, yeah. But it's more cakey than a cookie. Because well, it then uses... it's a cake, but also cookies are cake. That's true. Guys, we've gotten ourselves into the cube rule of cookies. But, we've got to start writing this but down. Is, is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, sorry. <sighs> I feel like we need a whole cube rule website about cookies. Because we've got cookies, we've got brownies, we've got cake. We've got one of these things. Not what are these things not like not the other? Like the other. Uh, yeah, Palm Gum has said a uh, uh, hot dog is a taco. It is. I linked the cube rule earlier. Yeah. But uh, so we have magic bars. Oh, we've got uh, a cookie is toast. Oh, I guess you're right because it would be a flat unless. But what if it's? <gasps> but if it's a shaped brandy snap that's filled with whipped cream, uh, then that then it's a, a taco. No, it's a taco because it's no, shaped. Uh, yes. Yes, and an Oreo is a, is a sandwich. An Oreo is a sandwich. Then <gasps> calls itself a sandwich. Um, but do you end up with sushi cookies? But yeah, most cookies are toast. Mm -hmm. There we go. Question asked and answered. <laughs> um, okay. Cheese crunchers. Oh, it's probably cream cheese. Uh, we've got some brownies. Okay. Let's take a look at some other stuff. Da, 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 da. Let's take a look at this because I super want to take a look at this. So the National Biscuit Company. Yeah. So before it was called, uh, so National Biscuit Company. United. Yeah. Well, uh, now called Nabisco. Um, oh no, it's Unita. Unita, which was a, a cookie, a, a, a product that they made, and then it's hard to see down here, but it says um, package catalog, as we're about to see. Find a you spot. need a baker's malted milk crackers. You need a baker's Slim Jim pretzel sticks. 
And this is not a hard rule because sometimes cookies can be savory and sometimes crackers can be sweet. But generally, the distinction is crackers are kind of like cookies, but they're... Okay. Explain, please, the difference between animal cookies and animal crackers. I don't know off the top of my head. You didn't tell me you were going to ask me that question. i got to research these things sometimes. We just talked about sweet crackers, which made me think of cookies and crackers. And, and there are animal cookies and there are animal crackers. Yes. It may have also have to do with texture and, but a brandy snap is a cookie. And some of them have frosting. Oh gosh. But some of them are in that waxy white chocolate coating. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. This is very complicated. Um, this has um, fig newtons. Only, made only with the choices face. Yeah. So again, these were the packages. This is just the packaging. So if you were a salesman for Nabisco and you were going store to store, you would have brought this and said, hey, this is what this is going to look like on your shelf. This is what the packaging for this product is. Uh, yes, Puddle, well, Puddle <laughs> Yes, Puddle Glum, Big Mutant yep. would be We have found sushi, the sushi equivalent. according to the cube rule. If you cut a brownie, is a brownie then just a cube? <laughs> Because it's solid all the way through and it's multi. Um. It might be a calzone. All I'm saying is a brownie might be a calzone. It might. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to banish myself. Um, uh, the cube rule is specifically for identifying dishes based on starch locations. Oh, well, that's why I'm about to say that's why we don't necessarily. Mm, Okay. Anyway, um, we talked a little bit about cookie versus cracker. There is, of course, the British use of the word biscuit in the way that Americans often use the word cookie. So we have the social tea biscuit, which is a cookie. Would be a little bit on the sweeter side. Uh huh. I can zoom out further if you. This is a big book. What can I say? Um, we've got some can or or like triscuits. Triscuits. We've seen those before. Uh, what is this? From? What's the this is this? from 1931. Cool. In and about. Uh, we've got the giant shredded wheat because, of course, before we had frosted mini wheats, it was one giant biscuit. It, no, and they still sell them. Mm -hmm. the you big can ones. still get the big ones. And yep. um, if, if anyone has seen Ted Lasso, um, they reference that giant shredded wheat a couple of times. Uh, we have National Arrow, Arrowroot Biscuit. Social Tea Biscuit with Tea Biscuit. Less successful racing cousin. Special tea biscuit. Was, <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, no. um, Zen, do, Zen, do we do don't have that. time to answer that that question, <laughs> Detective Zen. We can't. We can't go there. Um, we uh, do indeed. I have uh, because graham crackers, but that also has to do with the roots of that being graham bread. But yes, we I, have. I have actual um, from Germany. They cook in here today. Uh, we've got some Zuzu ginger snaps. Zuzu. Chocolate snaps. Uh, vanilla wafers. Cheese tidbit. Vanilla marshmallow sandwich. I'm I'm half expecting you to turn the page and we will see the twiglets. In fact, um, Puddle Glum, you are actually correct. A lot of the discussion is that part of the reason we use cookie instead of biscuit is differentiating from uh, the British and rebelling against that. That is actually part of the reason that there's some discussion and that's why we use that. We have to deal with the first issue of why Americans don't say things the way the other Americans yep. say things. There's also yeah. that. Um, we got some fun canisters of things. Famous sugar cookies, mm -hmm. famous ginger wafers, famous butter cookies, and famous chocolate wafers. Um, apparently they are famous, although I had never heard of them. The bridge cookies, so they're shaped like suits from a card deck of cards. Aces. Aces and spades and diamonds <clears throat> and hearts. We've got some graham wafers, some cheese wafers. Butter wafers. And then we've got our Fig Newtons again. Ooh. Uh, Chocolate. we have the, uh, Garibaldi biscuit, basically, but are they don't call it that. These? Oh, is that what a Garibaldi is? Garibaldi Just biscuit is a thin, crispy biscuit with raisins or currants in it. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. um, peanut butter sandwich. Mm -hmm. NBC. Yep. 
<laughs> not, not the TV station. Uh, but but the nabs. It's like um, I never would have thought of that as a cookie because mm-hmm. that's a chocolate bar. Yeah. Vanilla wafers. Um, essential ingredient for banana pudding in uh, most southern, meaning southeast U.S. recipes. In fairness, the removal of those extra U's in all of the words was a good call. It saves on printer ink. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like the lunch biscuit. Just the, I don't know what it is, but it's a lunch biscuit. Tunerville folks. Tunerville folks. That might have been an advertising that campaign. Probably that they part of their ad campaign, I would guess. Uh, we've got lady fingers, kind of a. A cross between a cake and a cookie. Essential for making tiramisu. Essential for tiramisu. Um, we've got the assortment deluxe. That's um, like the the Danish, Danish butter yeah, cookies too. Like like that's, that's, Which yeah. you know, are you gonna find a sewing kit inside, or are you gonna find cookies inside when you <laughs> open it? Most often a sewing kit. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Also, oh, yes, the animal crackers alongside the salt fish pretzels. What? I've never... I think that's the precursor to the goldfish cracker. Well, one of my favorite goldfish crackers is the pretzel goldfish. So that would be hilarious to now discover that it was the original. I think that's probably the precursor. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't researched that, but... Um, saltines. Yeah. Which are in a disco product. Hardtack. Yeah. Hardtack and saltines are, are quite similar. We've got some sugar wafers. We've got some chocolate snaps. So again, this is all like the cover of what the biscuit would have looked like. I don't know why it just says eggs. Oh, I bet there was like an egg biscuit. It was like an egg cracker or something Uh, like that. Wait, this is a scrapbook. I just realized this is... Well, these are actual actual covers. Yeah, so these were actual covers of the boxes that were pasted in this catalog and advertised for like salesmen. Again, you'd carry this around. Um... And you'd be able to advertise to a store owner, this is what these boxes will look like on your shelf. And again, we're seeing some repeats. We're back to the marshmallow sandwich. The only one but they might come in different is sizes. identical to the packaging that I am familiar with mm-hmm. is this one. Is that one. Yep. It's, it's the yeah. That, I think you can still get. Mm-hmm. You sure can. Um, let's see. Um, and then I love that this ends with actual display racks. So if you had nice. a bunch of their products, there's different kinds of display racks that you might be able to have or borrow that they would like you buy from them outright or like borrow from them. Um, and then this one. So why did they change from Unita to Nabisco? Um, I think it was a merger. Unita was a separate company and then Nabisco was a company or National Biscuit Company was a company and they eventually merged and then uh, shortened down to huh. Nabisco later on. So you could even sell a store the rack they need to display your product, which I think is pretty cool. This is why I love this item. Salesman catalogs are a lot of fun. We could probably do a whole episode on those because we have a oh, bunch yeah. of like fun advertisements. Definitely. Because I say catalogs, but in one case we have a set of salesman materials that are definitely not a catalog. <laughs> but I'll save that for what they. I'll have to save that for another episode. So this is more more advertising fun. Um, do you want to uh, look at that mm-hmm. one or because you sure. pulled that one? Oh, I pulled it because it seemed relevant. <clears throat> And I'll put this away for a second. We did an episode with salesman stuff that wasn't a catalog. It was um, Sweet and Low. Yes. Yeah. But there's some other stuff. Um, so, yes, we have a, a book here, The Christmas Cookie Cookbook, which seems quite appropriate to today. Um, and the whole topic of the, um, the stream. But aside from the title, I know nothing about it. It's from 97. So, more contemporary. C is for cookies. They, they do it. Okay. Let's just, I'm going to skip. I want to see what is in here. Yeah. I'm picking out a couple other things while I make Anthony do the work for a second. Um, also, I need to take a sip of my drink. Christmas wreaths. Sugar bear paws. 
Okay. <laughs> there are sugar bear paws. Sugar bear paws. Sugar, butter, flour, pecans or almonds. Use a madeleine pan. Or madeleine. I mean, that would make sense. It's shell shaped. Mm -hmm. So it would sort of be like a claw. A claw. Bear paws. Um, Christmas wreaths. I've, I've had a Christmas wreath before, but it's not this. This isn't what I've had before. You should all make it, all make me. It's me just a butter cookie. It's yeah. a butter cookie. Like the ones that I was think I, I assumed it was gonna be the cornflakes. Mm-mm. Oh, side note: margarine should not be substituted. Yeah, it does say that. Christmas cherry winks. Christmas sugar <laughs> sugar snowdrops. Did uh, you just cherry wink at me? <laughs> It, these, these are some, some interesting, interesting titles. If somebody wants a closer, closer look at one, tell me. Gingerbread men. Okay, classic. Christmas eggnog oh, cookies. That one specifies unsulfured molasses. That's interesting. See, sometimes they're really super and specific, and sometimes they just assume you know so much. And sometimes when it says something like that, it can be really hard to find the ingredient they specify. Mm hmm. As to peanut kisses, I recognize the cookie. Mm -hmm. I did, I did not, not know, know that's what they were called. Merry macaroons. Black and white. Chocolate orange balls. Hmm. Oh, that's like a rum ball, but it's without the alcohol. And really? it uses orange juice instead. Yep. That is almost, not quite, but it is very close to my rum ball recipe. Lacy oatmeal. Ginger snaps. Buttery cinnamon. Sugar drops. But these are all a lot simpler, too. That's nice. They're, they're not like 18-step, yeah. make three three components. But a lot of these are ones that I'm at least familiar with, mm -hmm. which it was published in my lifetime, but um, butterscotch, <laughs> cookies. Yeah, Zen, I, I'm i kind of curious. Like, <laughs> sulfur and molasses are just two words you don't want near your food. I want to... <laughs> What is sulfur? Like, why I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna look this up. In the first um, place? Is it molasses from the slopes of a volcano? Like, why is it sulfur? Sulfur molasses is made from young green sugar cane that has not yet reached maturity. It's treated with sulfur dioxide as a method of preserving sugar cane until it's ready to process. Ah. So some describe the flavor because of this. Some describe the flavor of sulfur molasses as having chemical notes. Oh. Cookies for a Christmas crowd. <laughs> but not any other kind of crowd. Only. <laughs> Glorious chocolate temptations. Hazelnut macaroons, macadamia chocolate cookies. Yeah, I now I have to find out what are cookies for a Christmas crowd. Does anybody know? Predictions. Some of these books need to. To go, go in the school and give shop. shop. Yes. <laughs> um, brighten the baking cleanup chores by singing Christmas carols and letting the family take turns. Yeah, let the family take turns cleaning up. That'll brighten things up. Um, margarine, brown sugar, sugar, vanilla extract, eggs, flour, salt. Okay. So baking soda, soda, oats, and coconut. And coconut. So, so it's just an oatmeal, oatmeal cookie coconut? with coconut. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically an oatmeal coconut cookie. They are cookies for a Christmas crowd, apparently. Okay. Anyway, I just thought I saw this sitting on the shelf, and I was like, "Well, that's that's the theme right there." Um, okay. I've got one that <laughs> is. Christmas girls while well, everybody else cleans. I like this idea. I mean, I guess it's an option. Um, I picked this one because this is very local. This was written by someone in Blacksburg, um, and this is from 1946. So, on to Gracie's cookie jar. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm really enjoying the music today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you, Pretzel Rocks. <laughs> um, so this is really interesting because she has on the beginning of this, um, you know, it's right after World War II, so yep. you're coming out of rationing. 1946. Um, and so when sugar is scarce, here's some cookies that don't use sugar, don't use a lot of sugar. When eggs are expensive, here are things that don't rely on those particular That's ingredients. Really cool. When you don't have a lot of butter, here are some things you can try. If you've got little kids, they might like these things. If you're going to do something, you know, for teenagers, if you're doing something for maybe a, a bridal shower or a wedding, um, church socials, holiday treats. So we'll take a flip through here and see what's in here. But isn't that a neat a idea? idea. <laughs> um, put your, I love this. Put your cookies on the lower shelf where the children all can reach. Um, for you know, my dear, how it is yourself when you're hungry and want something to eat. <laughs> um, so we have some brownies we're back to the discussion I love this it tells you how many eggs it requires right up front so again when you were talking about that kind of scarcity maybe you only have one egg and you're not sure you will, what you want to do with it you can make you can uh, you cannot make gumdrop cookies <laughs> Oh, here we go. I love it. Christmas gumdrop cookies, right? So we have eggs, brown sugar, flour. I can move that way since. Um, half a cup of chopped nuts, a pinch of salt, half a pound of gumdrop, except licorice. We're going to leave those licorice gumdrops out of it. <laughs> Put those cookies down. Get, get to the chopper. Uh, I did not do a Schwarzenegger voice, but. No. Yeah, I need guess. It's a really interesting way to list the contents. Uh, can we talk about number seven? Dark Sea. <laughs> Dark Secrets. Uh, this is interesting. It doesn't specify a fat, so it's whatever you have. Butter, lard, margarine, the, shortening. The Dark Secrets, though, have broken nuts and dates mm -hmm. that have been cut. Yeah. Fine. So they, they, they've got nuts that have been broken and dates that have been cut. Mm. It didn't go well, did it? Dark <laughs> Secrets indeed. Dark Secrets indeed. <laughs> uh, we do have some holiday cookies. We have Christmas trees and Santa Clauses. <laughs> Um, cornflake clusters. We're back to cornflakes. And again, these are, they don't really specify, sometimes there's a specific fat listed, so butter, and sometimes it's just fat, so whatever you have. Uh, the coconut, but with the A. Yep. To, to spell An older it. spelling, yeah. yep. Uh, sugarless. sugarless. Sugarless ginger snaps, so if you're rationing. What's in them? Uh, molasses. Molasses, yep. And then we have ginger snaps with sugar that also have molasses, but yeah. Uh, gold macaroons, which have egg yolks instead of whole eggs. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Uh, nut cookies. So. Oatmeal lace cookies. Oatmeal lace cookies. Oh, fudge. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. And a lot of these are using pastry flour, which I assume would be cake flour. Uh, or some of them are using pastry flour, which would, yeah, I assume would be cake flour. Um, orange cookies. I would cookies, have to look it up yeah. to be sure. Pecan puffs. And all these are relatively easy to make. Again, these are simpler. On the simpler side, not a lot of like um, components to make put together. Um, some of them have some commentary. I like this. So salted peanut cookies. Blend butter and sugar thoroughly, sift flour, baking powder, soda, and salt, and add to first mixture. Stir in the rolled oats, cornflakes, and whole salted peanuts, and drop on grease cookie sheets. Grand, large yield. I feel like that's really funny, because, like, I write notes on my own recipe cards, which is something I picked up from my mom. Like, she marks up her books. I do the same thing. And that's kind of neat to, like, just tack on. There's a lot of these. You're going to get a lot, of that, a lot out of this batch, or these are really good. Um, Toll House cookies. I like the spice snaps are listed as intriguing indeed. These are exciting. Okay, what does that say? Three quarters cup butter, but then they crossed that out. Somebody who owned this book crossed it out. Oh, it says Crisco. Ah, uh, Crisco. Yep. Um, Angel food cake, yum yum. Toll House cookies. Yep. We're back to Toll House. Which is using Nestle oh. chocolate. Chips. Went out of focus there for a second. There we go. Uh, yum yums. <laughs> Just yum yums. Mm -hmm. It's another coconut cookie. They are also interesting. 
according to the recipe. Interesting. Angel food cake, which is not a cookie, but right. okay. But yeah, it's fine. Um, it's fine. Oh, coconut, coconut cake. cake. Yeah, yeah, we're into cake now. I mean, I what, well, what, what did I say at the top of the show? Cakes, cakes, cakes are cakes, cookies are just small cakes. Orange filling. So, <laughs> yeah. Um. Um, shortcake. Cake. Shortcake. Sponge cake. Well, well sweet fudge cake. cake. Chocolate fudge icing. Moon cake. White moon cake. Moon glow icing. Mm. Uh, uncooked butter Sometimes frosting. Sometimes you need to know how to make basic butter frosting for cookies. Especially uncooked. Why can't I turn this page? Because I'm. Cake is not a biscuit. Cake is not a biscuit. <laughs> that is true. Uh, we have boiled frosting because sometimes you have cooked frostings. Divinity creams. Oh, those are candy. Mm -hmm. They are candy. Um, those are those. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They, they look like little white puffs, but they have like chunks of things in them. So, because it's got cherries and pineapple and nuts in it. And they look like, but they look like little white clouds and they're full of cut up fruits and nuts. See, but now I just want toot sweets. Uh, English fruit or bag candy. The bonbon you blow on. I don't know those. Toot sweets? Mm-hmm. From Shitty Shitty Bang Bang. Oh! Sorry. <laughs> I was like, my brain didn't catch up to you yet. Um, uh, we got jeans fudge. <clears throat> oh. Hello? Hello, 16-bit Eric. Welcome in Whimsies. Hi, Raiders. Uh, welcome to Archival Adventures. Um, you are joining on the Rogan 27 channel. I am Anthony Wright Day Hernandez, Community Collections Archivist here at Virginia Tech. And this is my once weekly show where we look at things from the archives and special collections at Virginia Tech. This week, it's Cookies with Kira. Hello. Uh, my, my wonderful co-host here um, who is uh, showing us archival uh, materials about cookies for our final um, adventure of the year. Uh, this will be the last episode until the 3rd of January, which is just two weeks from today, which is, wow. Um, but we also actually have cookies here. Should we, should we, let me see. Let me I think see. we should eat a cookie. Okay, let's go through this one, and then we'll, because, like, <laughs> we've gone completely off track. So those of you who are just joining us, we were looking at cookies, but this cookie, cookie recipe book also seems to have cakes, but we talked at the top of the yeah. show about how cakes Cookies are really just small cakes as their origin. Mm -hmm. I don't know how fudge fits into this. And then I changed the page, and there's, like, pie and rolls. So yeah. I'm like, I, we're all over the place now. But, um, but although the orange butter rolls are probably, they're not their cinnamon rolls, but orange. Ah, okay. So. Also, uh, if anybody here is not following 16-Bit Eric, you should follow 16-Bit Eric. Um, absolutely one of the best streamers out there. A wonderful person, a great community, and uh, you, you will... Thank, Thank yourself for following. I do like that it ends on popcorn balls since we're talking about holiday treats. That's very traditional this time of year for a lot of people. Everything is a cookie if you pretend. Uh, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, I do think. It's time for a cookie. Cookie Monster might agree. Okay. Oh. That, that it is time for a cookie. And yeah. Okay. Um, the question is which? Should we, we have people who have joined us so we can explain what um, we have. Yes. <laughs> we brought cookies with us today. Um, some of them we made ourselves. Some of them we didn't. Can you guess which one? <laughs> I <laughs> shouted <laughs> like, Hi, uh, One of these things is it's cookie, mo well, cookie monsters with us. I was going to say one of these things is not like the other. Right. Um, right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I made the Grinch cookies. It's, it's uh, 10 out of 10. They're, they're an the, awesome cookie. They are... Um, they're a cake, cake mix based cookie, but designed to mimic Watergate salad. So pistachio uh, pudding mix in there. Sadly, um, you, you don't want them if you are uh, not able to tolerate nuts. Um, the other, though, is at, all the way from Germany, I have some um, actual Lebkuchen that I brought in. Um, <laughs> you sampled a lot of those this week. Yes, Sterling. I feel like you owe me breakfast now. Oh my god, I have no holiday snacks. Pretty much for cheese. Sorry. Uh, the other three that are here, Kira made. Yes. So um, I was going to say at the top, but that's to me because cameras are backwards. 
Uh, the bright pink cookie you see is a strawberry cookie with chocolate chips. So this is, uh, thank you, Lord Portico, for reminding. Yes. Unfortunately, the cookie, side to side cookie transporters are not working today. We cannot beam you cookies. Uh, I wish we could. But um, yeah, so this is a strawberry cake cookie with chocolate chips in it. In the center, I've got, we looked at Toll House cookies before. This is your classic chocolate chip Toll House, but I rolled some of them in uh, red and green sugar to be festive. And then at the bottom here, we have a peach snickerdoodle. So I had, usually this is, or yeah, top, bottom, <laughs> either one or the other. Uh, and that is a, usually a strawberry snickerdoodle cookie that I made with peaches that I bought fresh and froze this summer. Uh, so those were, uh, and uh, Anthony can attest that um, Anthony has eaten many of those. So <laughs> not that I'm pointing fingers, <laughs> but yesterday. you know, we I decided peaches were a breakfast food. Breakfast food. yesterday. <laughs> um, lack of cookie torpedoes, Lord Cortico. Disappointing, indeed. Um, I, I'm opening the late yeah. thing. Uh, not that we don't like our homemade cookies, but oh, those came smell from Germany really and good. they're really good. As we said earlier, we are professional archivists. Uh, if you try this at home, you may get crumbs everywhere, but that's up to you. Yeah. We have prepared for this. We have paper towels. Just we have hand sanitizer. General, generally, we don't eat around the collection. Yeah, generally, you don't have food or beverages near your archival materials. Uh, we work with these materials all the time, and we are taking precautions. So, I'm really excited about these iced laid kuchen. Um, um, yeah. And I'm just going to show show everyone what they look like before we eat them. You're the so good. I'm just like, ah. cookie wafer on the bottom, which it has to have that wafer to actually be allowed to be called a lathe kuchen, apparently. Um, and now I've got, I'm just going to mm -hmm. take that out of the, the, the situation. Uh, so I will tell you then, we actually have a lot of cook because we have a lot of cookbooks in our collection around food history. It's not surprising to come across cookbooks that are pretty heavily covered in like food stains and damage. So I'm not saying I intentionally archive crumbs, but it has in fact happened before where you open something up and you get like surprise crumbs or weird like, oh, somebody clearly spilled oil, hot oil on that or coffee or something like that. So. Um, this is the portion of the show where you all watch us eat, which is nice and awkward. They are really good. I'm going to clean my fingers and I'll start showing everybody something else. Oh my gosh. Lord Pardico, thank you so much. Oh. Wow. <laughs> um, welcome. welcome. Welcome to the Rogues Gallery. Um, some silica, iron trout, Tila Brown, Laura himself. Sterling, uh, Pretty Witch Tree, CJ, uh, Bibliotech, Deary, Wannabe Sayuri, welcome or welcome back to the Rogues Gallery. It is great to have you here. Um, Cookie Monster is really enjoying today's stream. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll keep, the, we'll, we'll trade off here because that way I don't feel like everyone's just watching us eat on the internet, which is, right. you know. So I pulled this fun um, Better Homes and Gardens because obviously a lot of stuff we've looked at hasn't had a lot of pictures that can depend on when a book was printed, what publishing looked like, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is the Better Homes and Gardens. This is a whole series where there's often books on different topics. This is the one on cookies and candies um, from the Meredith Press. This is from 1966, so we're back to the era of that tiny book that we had as well. Um, but we get some fun full color cookies and candy chaos. Oh yeah, should I go that way? Yeah. Okay. I always like, I'm looking up, I'm looking down. So we have candies and cookies in here. Um, happiness is a warm cookie. Oh, that's 100% true happiness if you're me. is. Sorry. Um, uh, this would have been the, around the time frame when um, Your Good Man, Charlie Brown, the musical came out and happiness is was a song from that. Um, so I wonder. So Better Homes and Gardens, a big company who made a lot of their business on these kinds of products. So they, of course, have a, their own test kitchen that they use to, you know, make the things that they're offering us here. They cook it in Springerly. See? What is Springerly? Um, um, 
It is a German cookie that is licorice flavored. They're like a seven. It's like a seven hundred year old tradition. Hmm. It's, it's this. They're they're square. It says it's in the tear jar. Oh, oh no, the glazed in low jar. jar. You're right. Yes. No, it's right. It's it's this. So the Leibkuchen are here, and the Springer and the are. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. And uh, yeah, they're Hurst like cookie. Hearst cookie. <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't, don't like, like them? them? Is it because they're licorice? licorice? I also do not enjoy the licorice. The um, tear jar have spicy hermits. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing these and yes. cherry refrigerator cookies. Okay. The tall jar sports gaily decorated sugar cookies. Hmm. Okay, so what have we got in here? We've got, now we're getting an explanation of types of cookies. The other books we've looked at today have had some helpful hints and things like that. But this one's like flat out, here's what a drop cookie is. Here's what a refrigerator cookie is. Here's what a molded cookie is. A bar cookie, a rolled cookie, a press cookie. All different options. What's characteristic about them? Um, you know, what do you need to know about techniques for making them? How can you tell if they're done because they might behave differently, which is a really neat trick and really interesting information to have. Um, anyway, uh, so most of these you could make at home and if you like rolled cookies or, um, you might have to rely on cutters or you might just freehand. The hardest one, the only one you couldn't do without a specialized piece of equipment, though, for all things considered, would be a press cookie. If you don't have a cookie press, there's really no way to, like, mimic that process. Um, but You're all missing out on the best sweet, salted licorice. Uh, I've heard about a lot about salted licorice. I have never heard of such a thing. Hi, Blue Rooster. I have tried salted licorice, even though I'm not a big licorice fan, so that I can say I've tried it, but... Um, so we have some like fun stuff about shaping and decorating and storing, but let's get to. So we've got everyday favorites, like what are your sort of classic cookies, chocolate chippers, oatmeal <laughs> chips, jumbles. molasses jumbles, uh, busy bee chippers, which are honey uh, and chocolate and walnut and chocolate diamonds. Wow. And these are your chocolate chippers over here. So a little different from a Toll House chocolate recipe there, the chocolate, or the, the Toll House recipe we've looked at before. It's a little bit different. The proportions are actually a little bit different, um, but close to it. So, um, dark, rich chocolate cookies. It's very Scandinavian. You got into it living in northern Germany? Oh, salted licorice, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, we've got some chocolatey things. Uh, ooh, we've got um, malted oatmeal bars, which includes chocolate-flavored malted milk powder. So Ovaltine or, mm. yeah, something like that. Uh, we got some full-color brownies frosted with, <laughs> I don't know what's stuck on the top of those. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm not sure. <laughs> From one perspective, it looks kind of like a communion wafer, and <laughs> so I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is very 60s though it is very 60s as, the, as pink, the, decoration. the pink frosting um, oh. and then we have uh, Random. you want to learn about some this is the taco menu I don't sometimes you find fun part. things in cookbooks in this case it's a taco menu I don't know we'll come back to that um, <laughs> you can make marble brownies so again, we were kind of talking, brownies are like a cross between a cookie and a, a cake, but cookies are kind of little cakes. So these look savory to me. For the half yeah. a second, I was like, is this they do. some sort of <laughs> platter for taco cookies? Let's go. <laughs> I, well, I'm pretty sure I've made some things that look kind of like those. They, these look like taco cookies to me. <laughs> Marble brownies. Yeah, they look like pigs in a blanket. That was my first thought. Um, I was like, is this cheese? Is um, this like some sort of... <laughs> but I don't know what those ones are, but the I think these are the mincemeat star cookies. Those are the lemon tea cakes. That's lemon rind. I'm pretty... Or lemon uh, zest. It looks I'm like shredded sure. cheese. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, these would be the mincemeat ones. I'm yep, mincemeat sure. star cookies. A quarter for a taco? Nice! <laughs> um, I'm guessing that this taco menu is probably also from the 60s. I think this bookmark was just in the 
In the book. Yeah, somebody was just using it, repurposing it. Um, pineapple cookies, <laughs> marmalades. We're getting into like the fruit cookies now. Raisin bars. Thank you for the uh, follow, Michael. Um, those cherry refrigerator cookies from the beginning. Oh, that's. Oh, okay. I was like, that's not a cookie, but no, that is not. a cookie that goes with the sherbet. Yeah, okay. Okay, makes more sense. Is that the spicy hermit? It is a crisp ginger cookie. Oh. So we have, we talked a little bit about, we were talking about ginger on and off, right? Because we have gingerbread men or like things we might, gingerbread, you might roll out uh, to bake gingerbread houses. Then you have ginger snaps. Um, and then you have uh, ginger biscuits, which are the broader category, which if you get into the long history of gingerbread, which I did because a colleague of ours messaged me on Friday and asked me about the history of gingerbread men. Um, that, that actually goes back to the Middle Ages, the idea of a ginger biscuit, some sort of ginger cookie that is consumed as a sort of sweet treat. So anyway, that's something you see a lot of, and these are, there's all these variations. <laughs> there are spicy hermits in here. <laughs> there's also Joe Frogger. <laughs> Uh, so at least some of these sound very violent. You've got ginger that snaps at you. You've got spicy hermits. Uh, they don't like to be bothered. They're a bit spicy. If they want um, to be left alone. You've got lemon mace rounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess uh, no shortcuts, just mace to the face with that one. Um, Caraway cookies? Wow. Joe froggers. Sift together the flour, salt, ginger, cloves, nutmeg, and allspice. What are these? Cream the shortening and the sugar, add half the dry ingredients, half the water and rum flavoring, then half the molasses. Blending well after each addition. Repeat, chill dough. Why are they called froggers? Why? I um, yeah, you're correct, Portugal. We're getting close to historical medical advice, which the show does not give. Do not take anything we read in these cookbooks as advice. Um, yeah, no no medical advice. I don't know where my phone went. I was going to take a picture of that recipe because now I have to try it. Joe Frogger's? Yeah, because I need the, to know what it is. This is the fun part about working around food history materials is that you then get inspired to make things or never, <laughs> ever make them because they're kind of scary. Hey, you know what? We could use our taco menu as a book bookmark. Well, it's here somewhere, but whatever. We'll come back to it. I'll uh, mark it I for you. I have no idea. My phone disappeared. They seem really interested in us serving cookies with ice cream because now we've got sugar like cookie fans. Paul Bunyan sugar cookies. Uh, Italians serve their famous gelati with a flourish of sugar cookie fans. See, this is now taking a cookie and making it into a dessert right. decoration. And this dark herb one is really interesting because it's got molasses, ginger, cinnamon, clove, coffee, anise, and coriander. That is careful. A lot going on with in there. your coriander. <laughs> um. <laughs> so there's a lot going on Are in there. Are they froggers because you have to dodge traffic and jump on logs to make, make them? them? I don't know, Detective Zen. I need to know. This is Paul. What, is, what makes a Paul Bunyan sugar cookie a Paul Bunyan sugar cookie? Oh, they're made, they're makes 14 large cookies. They're probably large like, cookies. Okay. we make them big. No soap herb in the cookies. Um, coriander. Yeah. Uh, because coriander is the seed form of cilantro, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Um, see, I like cilantro. I do too, but <laughs> I understand but, it's not everyone's jam. Uh, um, let's see. I've never had cilantro jam. Neither have I, but I probably would. I would probably <laughs> like it a lot. Uh, we got some cereal snaps. So if we want to make a not not brand name uh, crisp rice cereal. Okay. Snaps. Oh, so like Rice Krispie right, Treats. Yes. Well, no, these are like snaps, but not. They're like, yeah. Oh, okay. They're more like a snap cookie, like the brandy snaps, but with rice crisp rice cereal in them. Bran apricot squares. Mm-hmm. Those don't sound too good. That reminds <laughs> me of the, um, what was it, the Prune Surprise? California oh, Prune Surprise? Oh, yeah, California the, Prune Surprise. On a sh uh, waiting to be cataloged downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Nut flavored favorites. Yep. It took you years to work out why the Thai food tastes soapy. Uh, here we have a party <laughs> spectacular. It is pretty spectacular. It, that would work for um, the international fair, sort yeah. of, um, uh, based on the decorations. Tri-level brownies? 
Is that like a like a, a split level ranch, but <laughs> but it, with brownies? I don't know what is tri level about them. Oh, they're multi. Well, so there's a bottom layer, a middle layer, and a frosting. Well, I was looking at the pictures though, because yeah. because it's in the picture, um, yeah. which is behind my head. But uh, I guess the top like. One layer is the walnut, one layer is the frosting, and one layer is the brownie. I think. Seems like it. Mm. <laughs> They're company specials. Coconut macaroons. Mm. Tempters. Things that go well with coffee or tea. Those are... Apricot, Apricot foldovers? Mm -hmm. I thought those were the mincemeat I think things. the other ones were mincemeat meat. That style is pretty common. They're like, um, <laughs> it's another Whoa. cookie sushi. Um, Festive. Jam witch, jam witch sugar cookies. Mm. Russian cookies, peppermint kisses. Confection bar, <laughs> bright eyed Susans. Okay. Okay. Mint chocolate mint sales. Uh, so, for those of you who are hanging out with us, what are your oh, favorite gosh. cookies? I did not terrify Easter Bunny. Um, it is. And cl oh no, there's clown faces. Nope, we gotta change the page. We can't here. Can't do clowns. <laughs> <laughs> so many of these recipes are an immediate no from me. They can keep their walnuts and coconut. I agree on the walnuts. I do. I like coconut, but I. I I would remove walnuts from basically every one of these recipes. Oh, they make a whole cookie zoo. We were talking about animal crackers before. You can make a whole animal zoo. Uh, okay, these flower pot cu cookie cups. That looks kind of cool. Animal crackers in my soup. Look at the little turtle. <gasps> oh, my gosh. It's a ginger snap turtle. Children love this turtle. Yeah, we, I love, we this love this turtle. We love this turtle. Look at that We would like to make this turtle. Ginger oh, snaps yeah, Pretty Witchery, for... we are not going to find a, a, an Anzac Biscuit recipe, but I am familiar with them and aware of them from the random encounters I've had with culinary history. Why are we not going to find one? It is an Australian recipe, and it is very... I've, I don't know that I've ever really seen... I might have one or two cookbooks where I've seen it, but it is not something you see very commonly in American cookbooks. The turtle is really cute. I'm less fond of the fact that they're using dried elbow macaroni as the legs. Ew, that's not edible. I mean, it is, technically. Oh, but they're also using and toothpicks. A toothpick as the tail. I'm not pulling a Sherwood-Anderson. Like, no, 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 no. No, there are ways to make the whole thing edible. Yeah, so Anzac biscuits were made for war. They traveled very well. Oh. It was, a, it was, they're an Australian... Um, but, they are sweeter, if I remember okay. correctly, like a dessert biscuit. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Tasting History did an episode on Anzac. There is a food website that I managed that was donated to us in 2020 called Food Timeline. Um, food Timeline has a whole section on this, which is why I've read up on it before. So. I don't know the uh, what address for it. Is this it's, it? Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, I'm a little concerned about these turtles that have inner, edible parts and not edible parts. That's uh, a little scary. It's... it's um, this is 1960s? I know. So. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you, they, I like the cute little carousel, though. They took the animal cookies and made them into, like, a little. Oh, that's cute. Um, well, that seems edible. Oh, no, they said put a tiny candle in it. That's a lit candle in there. What? This is awfully dangerous, this zoo. Um, we've got teen winners. I'm try I was I trying to find it. It might I, I Australian and New Zealand foods is under I think. Can I search? Yeah, or? yeah, you can. That'll search the site. Where is? Uh, towards the bottom of your screen right now, it says Australian. Ah. I think there's something in there about it. It's just super tiny. It is super tiny. Acquired tastes. But let me see. I think I can find it because I remember there being. Oh, found it. There you go. <sighs> Uh, oh gosh, Anzac Day commemoration. Committee? Oh, I fixed that link and now it's changed it again. I've broken. tried. 
But anyway, Zen has posted for us as well um, that this was came about because of uh, rationing and limited supplies during World War II. Um, I will say Food Timeline has a lot of broken links. I try to correct them as I go, but there's a lot of them that need work, so apologies <laughs> for that. Uh, we did. It, it, the timeline was donated to us. It was. Um, Originally created by a reference librarian, which I always love to point out, as a side project, uh, uh, who taught herself some HTML skills in order to create the site. We should do the cooking set next. Okay. And soon. Okay. Um, I'll see if there's anything else we want to, any other fun pictures we want to see in here. Um, before Anthony makes me open the box, it has Ooh, a hundred just, different it parts. It stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Cool. Yeah. Of iced vovos, which are more time appropriate for this book. I'm just curious, like what what people's favorites are. So, um, okay, Russian cookies in Puerto Rico, but you call them something else. And you, uh, Hannah, also makes them, but they're called Mexican wedding cake. Yes. I have seen recipes. In fact, one of the books I was looking at earlier, I think, had a recipe for this. Did, yeah. We just didn't look at it. Okay. I want, so um, the, what I thought we were going to see earlier um, was uh, the cornflake marshmallow uh, Christmas wreaths mm -hmm. that have the little um, red hot candy as decoration on them. Yeah. Those are so good. And I haven't had them in a long time because they're hard to make. Okay. Anthony has requested and shall receive uh, the little cookbook featuring little recipes for little girls. And, and That is the title. And children's cooking set. 1936. 19, circa 1936. We're not 100% sure. So first off, there's the book. There's a book? There's a book in there. But, but that's a folder with an envelope inside of it. It is. And inside that envelope <laughs> might be a book. Delightful toys for little girls. Wait, that's, that's the back, the back of the book. side. <laughs> the little cookbook featuring little recipes for little girls. Hashtag yes, certain things were gendered. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright by Sears Roebuck and Company. Never, by, never heard of them. Uh, <clears throat> Leone, Leone. Probably Leon. Leone. Leone and Hoyer. It's funny that the first name is the one I stumble on. Cooking expert for Sears, Roebuck, and Company. Uh, this is revision six fifteen thirty six. So uh, I, my interpretation of that would be June fifteenth, nineteen thirty six. But we don't know for certain. Yeah, we believe this is circa nineteen thirty six. That's why circa thirty six. Um, watching mother cook is fun. But it's much more fun to make things one's very own self. This little cookbook will help you do just that. The following recipes are easy to prepare with the little tools and pans that come with this set and are sure to taste just like the things Mother made. We hope you will like them too. I'm going to zoom out so you've got some space. Yep, I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, I'm going to move this over and I will read while you show things. Secrets of Success. If you would be a good cook, follow these suggestions. They are sure to help you. Get all materials you are going to use together on a table before mixing. When measurements refer to cup full, use measuring cup supplied with this set. Tablespoons or TBS period. Uh, means tablespoon, TSP period means teaspoon. Too much mixing, oh, sorry, I skipped something. All measurements are level, which means even with the top of the spoon or cup. Too much mixing toughens, mix only to give smoothness to the mixture. A pinch means as much as you can hold between the tip of your thumb and first finger when pressed tightly together. But everybody's hands are different sizes, so a pinch is going to be different for everybody. Pinch is always different for everybody. Um, bread and rolls. To make bread and rolls, we recommend asking mother for a little dough from her bread mixture, since preparing dough for bread and rolls is too difficult in small amounts. 
I, I'm gonna skip over most of bread and rolls and nut bread. I want to find cookies and I want to see if there's cookies in here. Well, there's baking powder biscuits, orange. Yeah. So we've got uh, Tess pinching on the skin of your nearest sibling. <laughs> the pinch is more of a vibe. <laughs> It is, more, it is definitely more of a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems like it would have lead in it. Well, that's all right then. Um, <clears throat> baking powder biscuit. Uh, this is flour shortening, baking powder, milk, and a pinch of salt. Mix and sift the flour. Here's a flour sifter. Um, mix and sift flour, baking powder, and salt. They're asking you to sift the baking powder and the salt, too. Um, mix shortening using two knives. I don't think they supplied knives. They did not supply knives. Um, there are more things in the box in front of me, but they did not supply we, knives. We have swords in the collection. I'm not sure we have knives in the collection. Um, um, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, cut the shortening into the dry ingredients. Add milk and mix gently until a soft dough is formed. Place dough on floured board. Knead lightly and cut into desired shapes. Brush top of biscuits with shortening. Place on baking sheet and bake for a few minutes in a warm oven. Orange marmalade uh, biscuits want you to follow the recipe for the baking powder biscuits, but before placing it in the oven, uh, Put an eighth of a teaspoon of orange marmalade in the center of each biscuit, and then fold it over and bake for a few minutes in a warm oven. Um, are those? Oh no, we've got we've got sugar cookies as well, um, which is shortening milk, baking powder, a pinch of salt, some sugar, flour, uh, soda, which is baking soda. Uh, and vanilla. Mix the shortening and the sugar. Add the milk and stir. Sift together the flour, baking powder, soda, and salt. Uh, and then once it's well mixed, add the vanilla. Wait, really? Interesting. Hmm. You're going to cream the sugar and the shortening together, and then you're going to mix together the dry ingredients separately and put the vanilla, the three drops of vanilla, into the dry ingredients. I think that that's not what they mean, but they weren't clear. That's how it reads. I know, I know that's how it reads, but I think that's a oopsie. Shake a little flour on the breadboard and place cookie dough on it. Dip rolling pin in the flour to keep dough from sticking. And proceed to roll cookie dough to a thin sheet. Cut out cookies using cookie cutters. Uh, grease the cookie sheet and place cookies on it. Bake in a warm oven for a few minutes. You can buy all of these and many more in Sears stores or in our big up. general catalog. Because delightful toys for little girls are apparently doll buggies, cleaning sets, play stoves, electric irons, ironing boards, sewing machines, doll houses, and dinner sets. All the things that we want to teach future homemakers of America in the 1930s. Wait, can we just buy them Lego sets? Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that booklet uh, was sold with this cooking set that are actual like usable tools for cooking they're just small like look at this bunt pan it's a tiny little bunt pan yes and this is the cookie tray, right? Yes. And there's a tiny little pie plate. Pie plate. Oh my gosh, look at that pie plate. These aren't quite as small as some of the things that you see on like um, Instagram, because people do uh, ridiculously tiny versions oh, yeah. of stuff. Oh yeah, like for hamsters and things um, like that. Now, but these were basically like, it's like, um, <laughs> Before, the like, like, the Easy Bake Oven, just give child-sized cooking implements and let the child uh, bake alongside, I was saying bunt, B-U-N-D-T, Detective Zen. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I think it's more of a little mold because it's not. It doesn't have a hollow in the middle, like a, like a like bunch of hand mold. wood. Yeah. You're probably right. It's so I'm not sure, but. Mold. Um, yeah, there's actually another, like, it, eight... I don't know what you heard. I was definitely saying bunt, B-U-N-D-T. We have to enunciate, I guess, what we're going to talk about bunt pans. I um, But, yeah, there's, like, a little a little muddler masher thing here. Why? I don't know. Sometimes you got to muddle things. Well, no, but this... This looks like a standard size muddler. No. So what is it a miniature version of? I mean, it's pretty small. My muddlers at home are much bigger than that. But huh, I don't know. And there's about, there's like eight more pans in here. I'm not going to unwrap all of them and get them out. Because um, we are end of, we are reaching yeah, we end are. Of time and we are over. But <laughs> suffice to say, it is a pretty inclusive, there's like a lot of little things going on here <laughs> if you this. are wanting oh, to learn really how to make light. some basic things. Yeah, some of them are made out of tin, which means they're really lightweight. Some of them are a little bit of a mismatch in terms of what's in here, but... Oh, they heard butt. Oh, okay. Which is different. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is our tiny little cooking set. We actually do also now have a, uh, a, a basically an, a 1910s Easy Bake Oven. I did not think to bring that because I don't know oh. how it would have worked with the camera setup. Uh, but you can see that on our, our, our X account and I think some other places I've shared that. Um, but we do have basically a 1910s kerosene powered Easy Bake Oven for children. We'll, also we'll have to bring it on sometime. Parts. We'll yeah. figure it out. There'll be a way. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to light it. No, we're never going to light it because I'm I am terrified of why we would bring kerosene into the archives. That was my first thought, Pretty Witchery, when we got it. I was very excited when we found it and when we, we acquired it. And my first thought was, who wants kerosene-flavored cookies? It's a kerosene-powered... Essentially an easy-bake oven, like a yep. child's oven. Yep. I cannot even imagine how dangerous this thing actually is. Like, and let's just give it to kids without supervision. That sounds totally cool, right? But these tools would be the perfect size for it. Yeah, and it comes with some. That one comes with some pieces too. It's missing some parts. We are aware it is incomplete, but uh, I feel like most kids were just helped to use the actual oven. Yeah. I mean, we had a wood-burning stove in my house growing up. Um, we never actually used it. Um, but, like, I, I think maybe once the whole time that we lived there did we use it. But uh, it definitely was designed so that, like, you open the door, you put wood inside, you light fire. Um, but it's a giant metal oven, so you don't want to go near it. But it's got a little flat top on it where you could, like, make pancakes and such if you really felt like it. Um, uh, it it's, like, just an old oven. And, and it was strangely in a house that was built well I really into want, the I really century. like the little chicken and bunny molds. Bunny? It's a bunny. It's a bunny? I think so. At first I thought it I was thought, a fish. I thought it was a fish, but then when I turned it the other way around... I think those are no, bunny. it's a bunny. Yeah, it's bunny ears. Yeah, yeah it's a bunny no. profile. Uh, ear, mm -hmm. eye, foot, foot. I thought it was a fish. Oh, what is a muddler? Sorry, thank you, Hannah. I must have missed that. Oh. So a muddler um, has, well, it, so it has a couple different connotations. In the context of drinks, like cocktails or non-alcoholic drinks, you use something like a muddler, which I'll hold this one up as an example, um, to combine liquid and sugar and things like mint leaves. So if you're making certain drinks, you might muddle your citrus peel yep. or mint leaves or something. If you're going to make a mojito, you need a muddler. Yeah, there's also some drinks where you might muddle citrus. Um, in the context of uh, baking and things like that or cooking in general, um, you can kind of think of it almost like a manual food processor, right? So I like could a use it. And pestle it's kind of small, but I could use this to like chop up, like I could, you know, um, crush up some nuts or something like that. Um, but I'm not quite sure how it fits in with this kit in particular, because like when it comes to baking, there's not a whole lot of things I think about muddling. But this kit wasn't just for yeah. baking; it was for other. Like other I, I would assume, it's just for it's for mashing things yeah. essentially and um like i would generally go to mortar and pestle for that 
muddler to me is specifically for cocktails. If but... somebody handed me this and I looked, I might actually use it to like break up chunks of brown sugar or something. Oh. I suppose if someone handed it to me, that might be my go-to uh, use yeah. for it. So I'm not quite sure where it fits in with this kit. There's actually a couple things in the box I didn't take out that look like they're mismatched. Like maybe they didn't come with the original <laughs> set. So we may have somebody may have collected these things and put it together, even though it's not fully what it was. <laughs> but um, but yeah, muddlers yeah. are just basically for mashing up liquids and solids to help them mix up together. Cool. And to get the essence of things out. I don't Hi, know. Key Squared. Um, so we are at the times. Um... At the times. Uh, so, it, was there anything else that you feel we absolutely must get to? No, Otherwise... I think we kind of, this was a good note to end on. Cool. So. Uh, well, uh, we will leave it there, and let me scoop us back here. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today for this adventure in the archives. Um, you, my, my little Mrs. Lovett's meat pies apron. Um, <clears throat> we didn't make any meat pies we today, though. Don't worry. Today. Don't worry. Everyone's you know, safe. Um, the history of all ingredients is existence. Uh, <laughs> you will have your small, dubious metal cooking tools, and you will enjoy them. Yes. Yes. He's Mandatory the worst fun. Pies in Thank you all so much for joining us for our cool adventures. Uh, this is the final episode of year three of our cool adventures. Um, and it is the last episode of 2023 for this what? show. Uh, we will return on the 3rd of January. Uh, so we're popping right back in to start year four um, with the first January in the new year. And um, we're doing something. Uh, aren't you doing something about the USS? Oh, yes, uh, the USS Dakota. Um, so we will be starting off the year with a steam powered uh, gunboat from the Union Navy in the American Civil War. All I heard was steampunk. So. Um, and uh, we have the Chief Engineer's journal so essentially the chief engineer's logbook from the uss dakota uh from the american civil war and so we're going to be looking at that um on the first wednesday in 2024 somehow 2024 is happening mm -mm. i i don't know how we got here um and well then, first there was uh, 2022 <clears throat> then 2023 <laughs> I don't know. It's still 2020. Um, it's true. And then, uh, so yes, we're doing the Philip Peltz Journal uh, uh, on that first Wednesday, and then uh, the second Wednesday in January is um, American Railroad. Uh, choo choo. And then the third Wednesday, we're still nailing it down, but the plan is African or African-American woman architect. Don't know yet which collection. Um, and then uh, the fourth Wednesday in January, we're going to be looking at Virginia Tech's nuclear power plant. <clears throat> nuclear. And then uh, starting in 2024, the final Wednesday of each month, we're going to pull something from the Pulp Speculative Fiction Collection, and we're just going to read stories. Something. So it might be Amazing Adventures. Oh, I, yeah, or we do, we do we have a do new not, <laughs> We used to. Yeah. Uh, Virginia Tech was the first, that we had the first um, educational nuclear power plant in North America, uh, but uh, Tech no longer has a nuclear plant. Um, 
but we'll talk about that uh, toward the end of January when we're looking at the nuclear plant materials. Doesn't everyone have a nuclear um, power plant? It's, we, have, um, we have a wonderful appendix to a report on a nuclear incident. Unfortunately, I've never been able to find the report on the nuclear incident. But we have the appendix, which is interviews with people who were involved. It's really interesting. We do um, have a great food publication about nuclear radiation testing on canned goods and how far away they had to be from the black zone to still be safe to consume in the event of... We're going to need to add that to a future episode as well. Yeah. But anyway... It's so, called uh, Operation Teapot. It's great. The, or something like the, that. The last Wednesday of every month next year, we're going to I'm going to pull something from the Spec Fiction Collection, and we're just going to read stories. Um, so it could be from Astounding, uh, Astounding Tales or... It could be from a magazine of fantasy and science fiction. It could be from, you know, all any of those things. Because um, we got a lot of them. And so that's that's where we're going next year for that. Um, anyway. You yeah, would be correct, Detective Zen. We're Ground gonna, Zero is not safe to consume canned goods in the event of a nuclear explosion. We're going <laughs> to uh, find a place to raid here. Um, maybe? If my computer will let me do what I need to do. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. And uh, thank you especially to my guest, um, Archivist Kira, who has joined many times in the past. Three, four. Um, and we're, I'm, my goal, my hope, is to get Kira to join us about once per... I've been showing up like at the end of every semester. Yeah, like once a sometimes semester. Sometimes in the summer. That was the goal, so. once a semester. Okay, we've got a... Uh, let's see, Stephen is playing Kerbal Space Program. Um, Monterey Aquarium has the Moon Jelly Cam. Uh, Opera Geek is on... Uh, ooh, Smalls. I haven't seen Hey Smalls in a while. Oh, um, Hey Smalls is on, and they're playing Alan Wake, and uh, Hey Smalls is a really, really fun uh, streamer. Um, she's an actress, lives out on the West Coast, and um, I think we're going to raid over there, because I have not gotten to raid her in forever. Uh, so join me in popping over there and... Um, Say hello when we get there. Thank you so much for joining. Let me actually set up the raid. Um, uh, but yeah, thank you, everybody. Let me get the raid coming in from both channels here. So many things are so happening. Many things to click. Um, All the buttons. <laughs> Hopefully we see you uh, sometime next year for more archival adventures. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so very much. I, uh, I hope we see you again soon. Until we do, keep exploring history, everybody.